Markets significantly off the day's high. Key indices gave up morning gains. The mid caps and the Nifty Bank up close around half a percent each. Titan falls in profit booking after a solid operational performance in the fourth quarter. The market awaits Hero Motor Corp's fourth quarter earnings. And finance stocks rise in continued rally in Indusin Bank, Axis, SBI and ICIC Bank as well up smartly. SBI announces cut in lending rates. And the World Bank projects the global economy to contract 5.2% this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic shock. While for India, it sees a 3.2% contraction in FI21 as stringent measures have curtailed activity despite fiscal and monetary stimulus. Hello and welcome to Business Lunch. I'm Nigel D'Souza and... Uh, we have been telling you this and we need to say it again because we care for all of you. We ourselves have gone ahead and disinfected our studio as well as our gadgets before the start of every show. Since we have done it, we urge you as well to please take all the precautions and regularly disinfect and sanitize your surroundings. Well, in terms of the markets, it seems like we've come in for some profit booking. 10,300 odd, that seems to be the mark where the bears come in and take control. Because for the second day running, we have seen some profit booking from those levels. Now, a couple of stocks that I'll be looking at, one being HDFC, that's come off the high point of the day. So let's get the intraday chart of that stock up for you on the screen. And the other one we'll be looking at is um, also pull up ITC. That stock as well has seen a bit of a downtick in the last few minutes. So I'll keep an eye out on both those two stocks. Let's get the intraday chart of uh, both those two stocks up. And BPCL, I will see all those stocks are holding well in the green. That's not the case now. They've moved into the red. So some of those OMCs as well have come in for some profit booking. But let's get straight then to a CNBC TV exclusive. We learn from sources that GST collections for business activities in April were hit by the lockdown. Timsey joins us to fill us in with more details on that. Timsey? Well, as you rightly said, the business activities in April were impacted by the complete lockdown that, we'll see, that we were seeing across the country. And this has had a similar impact on the GST collections. What we learned from sources is that, that the GST collections for business activities in April, which were supposed to be filed by the taxpayers till 5th of June without any interest, have come down to as low as 49,500 crore rupees only. Remember last year when things were normal, uh, the business activities in April had yielded a GST collection of over 1 lakh crore rupees mark. And coming down, is uh, this is almost 60% decline that the government is seeing in the collections. Also, what uh, we should note that uh, the collections are uh, likely to be coming up in a few more, uh, say, hundreds or thousands of crores because the, uh, the deadline to file GST collections for business activities in April has been extended till 30th June by the government, provided that any filing post 5th of June till 30th of June will have to have a 9% of interest that the taxpayer has to pay. So without any interest, with already an extension of 15 days, the collections have come out to be only 49,500 crore rupees. Remember last month, that is for the business activities in March, the collections had come out to be around 61,500 crore rupees. So we were definitely seeing a slowdown in the collections, especially when it comes to March and April. March, the lockdown started only 20, uh, beyond 25th of March. So initial month of March was also hit by the COVID impact or the economic slowdown. That is something that we need to still wait and watch government to help us. Okay, Thank Timsey, you. thanks so much for joining in and filling us in with all those details. Let's shift focus on a couple of sectors that are doing well. Sugar stocks, they are high on expectations of a hike in minimum selling price. Manisha joins us to fill us in with those details. Manisha, over to you. Thank you for that. Well, yes, the expectations have been quite high and there has been a conversation within the Agriculture Ministry and Commerce Ministry for some time now. And there is a bigger buzz now coming in, especially after the Maharashtra government as well has now written to the centre to increase the minimum selling price for sugar, which as of now stands at 31 rupees per kg. But the cost of production of sugar is anywhere between 34 to 36 rupees per kg. We have had an Niti Aayog report as well, which has requested for a 2 rupees of an increase here. The UP government 
had written for a 3 rupees per kg of an increase and now the Maharashtra government has written for 3.5 to 5.5 rupees per kg of an increase in the minimum selling price there. Also remember it is June now and the fair and remunerative price or FRP as it is called also has to be announced for this season. So the expectation is that as and when that would be announced perhaps in this week or the next with that the minimum selling price of sugar uh, that uh, thing also would be cleared at, at, at this point in time. For the month of April, we did see the sugar companies sell nearly 40% of sugar of what they normally do sell. But as the lockdown is easing, we are looking at higher selling in sugar. But even with that, the liquidity concerns in the sector are quite high. The sugar mills have to pay the cane farmers. But with less sugar selling, there is an issue coming in for the sugar mills as well. So if the minimum selling price is increased, that would really come in as a positive. And the expectation that it could happen this week or the next is really keeping the sugar prices or the sugar mills for that matter on a high spirit right now okay all right thanks so much for that manisha well let's focus on a couple of those nifty stocks that are very very volatile today starting off a titan the stock is off the high point of the day despite a solid operational performance with a big beat on the EBITDA as well as on the profit uh, front manglam joins us to take us through the numbers as well as the key takeaways from the management commentary on that conference call manglam over to you Well, the management commentary for Titan's uh, con call was rather reassuring. Just to take you through the numbers, revenues of around 4,400 crores were pretty much in line with what the street was working with. However, the EBITDA of 604 odd crores was much above what the expectations were and that led to a big beat on the net profit as well. Increased gross margins, lower ad spends and the company's control on costs were what led to the big beat in EBITDA. However, the important part was the commentary that came in in the conference call. The first one, of course, was the fact that the company is targeting normalcy by the fourth quarter and that was reassuring. Apart from that, there was encouraging uh, uh, trend as far as sales recovery is concerned uh, as the companies opened close to around 1,400 of their 1,800 overall stores, which include the likes of Tanishq, the watches uh, stores as well as the eyewear stores. So 1,400 stores in which they're open, they are seeing encouraging trends. Over and above all of that, it's during these unprecedented times that they believe there is a fair amount of uh, opportunity for Titan to grow given the strength in its balance sheet. And they've also uh, implemented a war on waste program, which is basically a cost savings initiative, which the company says will continue to you know, help them as far as margins are concerned and their return ratios on their capital are concerned. They saw no revenues in April. They saw only about 10 to 15% worth normal revenues in the month of May. But this number has moved to around 30 to 40% in June so far as per their expectations. So the first quarter is a miss. The second quarter has uh, seen a bit of a dip as per the management in terms of their expectations. They believe by fourth quarter there would be normalcy as average sales have returned to about 60% to pre-COVID levels. They say eventually the long-term trust of Tata and Titan will indeed stay around and help the company, which is why perhaps the stock also recovered from the lows. Got it, Maglam. Thanks so much uh, for that. Well, let's focus on another company that's reacting to its numbers. By the way, we have Graphite India's numbers that are flashing for you on the screen. The numbers look weak, and it shouldn't surprise anyone out there because you know there was this pressure in terms of uh, uh, you know lockdown pressures. Um, in the in the fourth quarter besides that we know that graphite prices you know graphite electro prices have been seeing a one-way slide out there now the hope is that at some point of time the demand supply dynamic will play out and then we'll see a basing out of prices and then in fact with higher demand we'll see prices as well moving up now on a year-on-year -year basis obviously those numbers are going to look weak so it doesn't come as any surprise that those numbers on a year-on-year -year basis is weak what we're looking at is maybe there'll be a recovery in the next three four five quarters and that's something that you need to track very very closely we'll be on top of that as well and try to keep you best informed in terms of demand for graphite electrodes as well as pricing for graphite electrodes. Now, besides that, let's tell you about PVR. The stock is under pressure post its numbers. Nupur joins us uh, to tell us um, you know, how those uh, numbers were and uh, a quick analysis uh, of that. We'll get to Nupur in just a bit. But earlier today, we spoke to the management. Let's hear out what they had to tell us. We're just hoping. Uh, that we do open shortly, maybe in a month or 45 days' time. I don't know. It's very difficult for me to give any number to it just now because it's a state subject. Although uh, Ministry of Home Affairs has given the guidelines, still every state has to take that call depending upon you know, how their situation is uh, as far as COVID-19 is concerned. All over the world, groups sit together 
and the staggered seating is like families of four can sit together, but you leave an adjacent seat next to it uh, empty. So therefore your capacity loss doesn't happen too much. It's about 25%. Uh, in that case, because people are living in their homes together, flats together, apartments together, and when they go out, they don't need to uh, social distance themselves from each other. Uh, so about uh, three people, four people, that's the average transaction size in India anyway. They'll sit together, uh, uh, if they're groups and families, and then uh, you leave one seat aside. Okay, so 